That didn't work that time. Alright, welcome everybody. Today in this video I'm going to be talking about DHCP and how to release an IP address on a client when it shuts down. Uh, there's three options on how you can do this. You can manually go into PowerShell and type in ipconfig forward slash release. Uh, we could set it at the server level, which is a DHCP option, which is probably the most preferred method. Or you could actually go into the registry setting and create a string to where it will automatically release that IP upon shutdown, but you have to go in and set this registry. Uh, one reason why you would want to do this is if you have a work center in your company that does mass imaging or puts a lot of devices on the network that gets an IP and then moves it somewhere else and goes to a different subnet and gets another IP, while when it went to its first subnet, it used up all the IPs. So we need a way to free up those IPs so the system administrator doesn't have to go in once a week, twice a week, once every two weeks, and clear all those addresses out because all those devices are taking up those IPs. Um, you could also reduce the DHCP lease timer, but usually you want to keep that between 8 to 30 days. Um, so, but I'm going to go through this video and show you how to release an IP uh, upon shutdown. All right, so I, I have GNS3 set up and I have a little basic switch here. It's the little GNS3 switch that isn't really doing anything. Then I have a Windows 10 machine and a Windows server as it's, it is acting as the DHCP server. So let's go into both of these devices and see what's going on. And I will play some copyright free music in the background. So let's go to the server first. And let's log in. And we'll take a look at my DHCP settings that I have set up here. While that's logging in, let me log into my Windows 10 client. And by the way, you can get these images on Windows. You can get some free um, trial images so you can practice in your lab. I, that's where I got this server and that's where I got this um, Windows 10 machine as well. These are all just servers. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, trial, trial images. All right. Uh, I will go into the registry, but not right now. So I will explain this in a second. But let's take a look at what this image has as an IP address. So it's got a 10.0.0.10 with the gateway of 01 and the DNS suffix. It's part of ccmpsethhome.lab. All right. If we go into our server, which is finally coming up, if I go to tools and I get myself out of the way, we will go to DHCP. And we will look at the settings. So the server options for this scope, I have, I'm telling the clients to go to 10.0.0.1 as its default router. Here are some DNS servers and then here's your domain name which we saw in the Windows 10 client. If we look at the addresses that are leased, we see that we have one client and it is 10.0.0.1. And there are no scope options, I mean these are the only scope options. So. Um, the only way to get rid of this IP before we shut it down is to do an IP config release. Okay. So before I do that, I like to see things. 
I want to see these packets actually reach the server. So we have Wireshark, and this is why I love GNS3 because every link in GNS3 I can Wireshark capture. So uh, I, I love I love using GNS3. Now once this comes up, I will filter by just saying boot p because boot p is DHCP. Let's go to my Windows client. Let's type in ipconfig forward slash release. I released it and look what happened. The Windows client 10.0.0.10 sent it to its um, DHP server, which is 10.0.0.1, and it says, you know what, release my IP. Okay. If we go to the Windows machine, no more address, go to the server, and it should be gone. Let's refresh. No longer there. Now we could actually shut it down. So now we release that IP. Now it's free to be um, assigned to someone else. But let's before I get it back, now let's move on to the second step, which is let's configure this DHCP option to tell the client on its own to release it. And just to prove to you that Windows doesn't do it on its own. Let me get that IP back. Let me do uh, renew. And Wireshark should actually see the DORA, the discover, offer, request, and acknowledgement. And that machine should get, now it has 10 back, 10 0 10. When I shut it down, let me verify that that registry key is gone. Yep, the registry key is gone. When I shut it down, DHCP is still going to reserve that IP for this user because he has not released it yet. So let's shut it down. Windows is shutting down. The Wireshark capture. Come on. Wireshark Capture did not see a release. So now that computer is off the network, go back into the server, it's still there. This machine could now be moved somewhere else, but now it's hogging this IP. So let's bring it back. And let's configure this DHCP option while this computer is coming back up. So the way that we do that is you go into the DHP scope options, right click, say configure options, and uh, we want to go into the advanced tab, and under vendor class, we want to do, go into Microsoft Windows 2000 options, and then check this little box, 002, Microsoft release DHP lease on shutdown. Option for enabling or disabling Windows 2000 clients to release DHCP lease on shutdown. That's exactly what we want. Click that. Bam, there we go. Now, the Windows 10 machine should now, when I shut it down, release its IP. Now, since I just configured this, I'm going to do a release and renew again just to make sure that it picked up the new settings. Okay. So it has an IP. Let's go ahead and release it. Wireshark should have picked that up. Okay. Oh, and one thing I want to point out right here is when a computer shuts down and it doesn't release its IP, it's going to hold on to its last configuration that it received. When it comes back onto the network, it's going to request 
all the parameters that it had when it shut down because it did not release it. So that's why when it came back up, we didn't see a discover or an offer. We saw a request and then an acknowledgement. Request is from the client and the acknowledgement is from the server. So the request was like, hey server, um, I used to have these parameters right here. Can I have these? So the requested IP address, I used to have a 10.0.0.10. Is that still available? Can I have it? And then the DHP server was like, yes, yes, you can. So it has it, it had its own its old configuration. But I just released it. Now I'm gonna renew it to make sure that it picked up the new DHP settings that I just created in the background. Remember. It was this Microsoft Windows 2000 options 002 release DHCP lease on shutdown. Okay. So let's go to the Windows 10 machine. Let's shut it down. And we should see, here we go. We just saw a release of that address now. So that proved that that option told the client, hey, when you shut down, release your IP. And then we'll go into the server, hit refresh, and it's no longer there. All right, so that just proved this second option, the DHP option. This is probably the most preferred method of doing it. But I want to show you one last option, and that is, it, um, creating this registry setting. So let's go back into my server and let's take away this option. Make sure that there are no leases. So next time when the client boots up, it won't get that DHP option. It'll act like how I first started this lab. Let's stop it. Let's start it. There we go. Now when it boots up, you'll probably see the, the door request because I released it so it doesn't have an old configuration. And there we go. We got the discover offer request and guess what it's probably saying hey can i have an address sure you could have 10.0010 wherever it is it should be up here somewhere there we go your client ip so let's log in Verify its IP again, one more time. All right, good. Now, to do this registry setting, it's kind of long, but I'll show you. So when you go into registry, the registry editor, you'll go local machine, then you'll hit system, current control set, services, TCP IP, parameters, interfaces, and then choose your interface ID. So once you get to the interface level, all I do is I just hit down and then I'll look for the interface that has all those settings. So here I'm at interface. I'm just gonna click the down button and then go, okay. There's an interface, doesn't look like that's the one I'm using. Here's an interface, 10.0.0.1, that's my default gateway, there's my domain. This looks like the interface that I need to configure this registry string. So all I do, I right click, click new, go into a D word 32 bit value, and I will say release on shutdown. Hit enter, double click that, put that value to one, Click OK. 
Exit. And then let's shut down. And we should get a release. That didn't work that time. I think because once I did the registry setting, I think I needed to restart the machine for it to take effect. So I'm going to bring it back up, not do anything at all, and then see what happens. Thank you for staying with me. There's a lot of turning off and turning on of these machines, but this is, uh, I think this is a very, very good video because I don't think there are videos out there on how to do this and the why to do it and things like that. So. Sugar-free Red Bull, I love them. All right, one last time, one last time. Come on. IP config. Good. It came up. It did a request and acknowledgement because it already had a previous configuration. So we saw that when we turned it off, it did not release its IP because I made that setting and it needed to restart for it to take effect. So let's go ahead and shut it down now. And let's see that DHCP release. Bam, there it is. It just did it. So after you make that registry setting, restart the computer and then it'll take effect. All right. So. These were the three options that I went through on how to release an IP upon shutdown. Manually go in and say IP config release. You have to do this for every machine and then shut down your machine. Or you can do it at the DHCP level and say, hey, every Windows client machine, if you receive an IP from me, when you shut down, I want you to release it. Or you can do some programming, create a script, or have a GPO send out this registry setting if you want it to. Regardless if it's DHCP or not, you're going to send a DHCP release uh, message. So, but the other, these are the three options. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, I sure did when I read it and I was like, this is awesome. I have to do a video for it. Um, so that's it. I uh, hope this was... I hope this video was informative for you. Thank you for viewing.